let us start lecture 32, uh, the course is corrosion failures and analysis and we will conclude pitting corrosion today, uh, we will we'll look at the mechanism of pitting and then also try to see some of the protection uh, procedures or routes one can employ to avoid pits. Now, the course is failures and analysis, uh, corrosion failures and analysis lecture 32. Pitting corrosion will uh, look at mechanism part. Now, uh, as we see that uh, in case of crevice, we could see that we have a crevice, and within this crevice, we have oxygen depletion. that lead to finally, after having excess A phi plus plus generation, because this portion will be anode and A phi plus plus excess amount since the OH minus whatever is available that would react with A phi plus plus Two equal to A phi O H whole two, but since we have huge amount of oxygen reduction, in an SCL solution, it has to produce more A phi plus plus ions, and that would be excess once the solubility product of this particular species exceeds. So, then only A phi plus plus will be extra in the solution in the within this crevice and then chloride ion, chloride ion comes in, it reacts with A phi plus plus just to neutralize that excess positive charge within that crevice and this one then hydrolyzes to generate hydrolyzes and generate a phi o h plus h plus chlorine minus H 2 O react with H 2 O. Now, here we generate H plus and chlorine minus. So, H plus ion increases the acidity or pH decreases and this chlorine ion helps destroying destruction of passivity. So, both of them then lead to rapid autocatalytic growth of autocatalytic growth of crevice corrosion part. Okay. So, that is the uh, mechanism what we have seen in case of crevice. Interestingly, the mechanism part of pitting becomes exactly same, this particular entire part for pitting it holds almost similar mechanism. Now, the only difference is, 
So, if you consider that this part depletion of oxygen, this happens and the entire thing happens during the growth stage. So, th this entire thing whatever the mechanisms mechanism we have just uh, indicated in case of crevice it is the basically growth stage mechanism in case of peating, but this is not the initiation stage, this is not applicable to initiation stage. Now, why we say this initiation stage? Because for crevice we know that we have a we have a design part of that particular crevice that means, the crevice section is wide enough to allow electrolyte ingress and it, it is narrow enough to maintain stagnant condition. Okay. Now, in case of peating, peating can happen even without having crevice one can have peating. For example, if you had if you could recall the plate what we have shown that stainless steel plate with a lot of perforated pits. So, that plate was flat without having any crevice, but still it had peating. So, peating can happen. So, this initiation part, this part can happen even without having without crevice. Now, let us see what happens during the growth stage. Let us say first of all let us not get into this initiation stage. Let us say some peat has initiated, this is a peat let us say a small pit. this is a small pit, and this one we have zoomed and we are seeing this. Now, within this small segment and if it is a stagnant situation, stagnant situation, then initially everywhere we had let us say oxygen content, oxygen content same. Now, since this and let us say this is a NaCl solution. So, that means aerated NaCl solution. So, that means the pH is you can say 7. So, that means a neutral solution. So, the cathodic reaction would be four OH minus. So, this particular cathodic reaction. So, it happens everywhere. Now, after some time because it is a stagnant solution, the oxygen content within this peat here. So, the oxygen content drops down. So, that means it is a depletion of oxygen. Now, this particular portion no depletion of oxygen, here also no depletion of oxygen. Fine. So, that means if it is depleted and the other section the flat part of it is not depleted with oxygen this cathodic reaction will continue to happen in this section as well as in this section, but since it is depleted oxygen. So, it is a aerated cell and the peating part this peating part would become anode. So, now because it becomes anode anodic reaction would take place there. Now, since if you consider this small pit which has been zoomed here, now in a small segment we have Fe plus 2 
and the rest of the part we have huge area. So, again it actually having a situation of galvanic corrosion where cathode area where large cathode and small in fact this becomes tiny anode p portion and this is a typical accelerated accelerated galvanic corrosion. So, this is the condition for accelerated galvanic corrosion. So, this portion the pit portion it would lead to huge dissolution of in pit portion. So, that means again it will have a phi OH hole 2 formation and it is have having its own solubility product and that is as a function of temperature because solubility product K s p is basically function of temperature y because delta g is a function of temperature and this is basically minus r t ln k p k s p. So, this is related to the free energy. So, that is what it becomes temperature function and pressure is constant. So, in the solubility product if it exceeds in that particular section. So, that means the rest of the iron ion will start coming up extra. Okay. So, now it is excess a phi plus plus ion and this needs neutralization because within this small segment we have excess positive charge. So, that excess positive charge chloride ion will move to will migrate to pit portion. Now, this chloride ion will react with a phi plus 2 and it forms a phi C L 2 and this a phi C L 2 since there are water molecules it will hydrolyze this particular part it becomes a phi O H hole 2 plus H C L okay. so plus minus and since it is a strong acid that is what I have written in terms of plus and minus those ion forms. This process is called hydrolyzation, hydrolysis. So, this hydrolysis would lead to excess hydrogen ion which would lead to a reduction of pH becomes it becomes more acidic and excess chlorine ion which disturbs or destroys passivity fine since there is a excess chlorine ion. Now, this destruction of passivity means a lot in case of peating corrosion. pH of course, we know that uh, with the increase in pH if we try to see uh, a Pobe diagram E versus pH the uh, plot of iron Pobe diagram is uh, sort of like this. Like this. Now, where this part is, uh, so this is pH, this part is Fe, which is immunity zone, the Fe, Fe plus 2, this is Fe plus 3, this is Fe OH hole 3, this is Fe OH hole 2, this is H. FeO2 minus. Now, in this case, as you see, if the potential is maintained here, let us say the potential is here and the pH is let us say 7. So, that means it is in a passivating condition. Now, if the pH drops down because of the increase in hydrogen ion concentration, so if it comes here. 
so that means it is ending up in the corrosion zone so that enhances corrosion now chloride ion we have seen that if we try to look at the breakdown potential due to chloride presence e versus log i we have seen that let's say if it is a uh, self passivating okay so that means that case the curve will move like this this will move up this point will move up and this point this particular thing will move towards right and this particular potential also drops down as the chloride ion concentration increases so like that way so that means this way chloride ion concentration goes up so that kind of situation we had already seen so the chloride ion excess chloride ion would actually destroy the passivity within the pitting so the pit would not repassivate because of the even there is a chance of repassivation chloride ion will not allow that pit portion to repassivate so that allow to pit to grow at a enormous speed because it has to maintain electro neutrality for that chloride ion has to come to neutralize that excess positive charge and excess positive charge is forming because you have to supply electron for this cathodic reaction happening over the entire flat surface and that chloride ion will lead to iron chloride formation hydrolysis and then acid formation and this one settles down okay because this is again a hydroxide so that means we don't have any passivating situation we have corrosion situation because this is reaching to a corrosion section this is specifically corrosion section in pobe diagram so that means there is a there is a kind of interlinking between kinetics and thermodynamics so this pobe diagram is thermodynamic part and this e versus log i plot is basically kinetic part so that are interlinking and then it is leading to excessive dissolution or autocatalytic dissolution within the peat portion now interesting part is let us understand chloride ion concentration little more now here chloride ion concentration is very high and here chloride ion concentration is not that very high okay so now if it is having a passive layer passive layer that passive layer would not get disturbed okay during the growth stage because the chloride ion concentration within the pit has gone up so it will not allow the pit to repassivate but the other portion the flat portion other than the pit region will have passivity and that will provide the surface for cathodic reaction interesting situation here that the chloride ion is not allowing the passivity to achieve within the pit but it will allow it will not it because the concentration of chloride ion is not that high on the flat surface the passivity will maintain and this also indicates that the growth of peat is actually protecting the other surfaces so actually peat is acting like a sacrificial portion so the peat behaves like a sacrificial region within the same metal for protection of other surfaces of the same metal so that means here sacrificial for sacrificial activity we don't need another metal so the peat itself is acting like a sacrificial anode region which protects the other surfaces now interesting part is that happens because of this phenomena this phenomena is exactly same as what we have shown in case of crevice but peating cannot be considered crevice because peat can happen on the flat surface also it doesn't need that crevice to uh, achieve uh, crevice to uh, uh, crevice to form and then crevice corrosion starts it happens anywhere on the on, on, on a metal surface without having any crevice now interesting part is initiation 
So, this is the growth part. So, whatever I said this is the growth part and this growth would stop when the thickness it goes through thickness. So, that means, if we have a metal cross section. So, let us say here the peat happens. So, the speed grows like this and then finally, leak happens. So, that is then the growth stops. So, till then peat grows till till it reaches other surface. So, this is a typical nature of it even Cravis case also Cravis stops when the entire metal saw section is perforated. Now, coming to the initiation part. So, as we have indicated before that initiation can happen on a weak spot, weak spot on metal surface. So, that weak spot could be compositional inhomogeneity it could be due to local stress section it could be due to local scratch it could be due to local change in chloride ion concentration at some location if the chloride ion concentration suddenly goes up then definitely that can happen. It could be due to inhomogeneous or you could we could be due to typical microstructural pattern. microstructural pattern. We have all explained these things before. So, there pit can start and the growth stage of course, the way it happens we have just explained. So, that is basically the mechanism part of it. Now, when we talk about this pit formation, we have to check that is there any because it is definitely related to potential because we could see that these are the potential which is called E pit or in short it is called E p. Now, question is whether that is the potential we have to worry or we have to find out some other potential where the pitting will not happen if we do not reach to that potential. Okay. So, let us see in order to understand that we have to get into we have to see a polarization diagram again. to decide the potential where pit grows fast. Now, if we see a cell passivating system E log i in that cell passivating system the graph look like looks like this and here we are seeing that this is my E pit. Okay. Now, if we do cyclic polarization, then let us say it has gone to this level and from that we are reverting back in the potential axis. So, if we revert back it can come this way and it can have a kind of graph like this which is called negative hysteresis or negative loop. It can also happen, so this negative loop is happening. Okay. Now, if this thing happens, we say that there is no question of peat growth. Okay. So, there the system is absolutely stable and has a good resistance to pitting. Now, if we have positive loop, the positive loop, loop 
looks like this it cuts like this okay so when the positive loop cuts like this this is called positive loop this is a typical response of uh, a cell passivating system showing pitting aggressive pitting now the potential where the reverse curve so this is the forward reverse curve so this is the forward curve and this is the in this case this is the reverse curve which is the negative hysteresis or negative loop and in this case is a positive loop and this is the negative uh, this is the reverse uh, 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 polarization so this potential has got a huge importance this potential called erp okay or some book you will find this is called epp so the rp is repassivation and this is pp is protective potential in fact protective potential to pitting fine and this is also repassivation that means we say that the whatever pits have formed here during the forward movement so these pits when it reverses back at this potential it would repassivate again that means it will not grow okay so that's what this is called repassivation potential so this is related to stoppage of of pit growth now if we go this way so that means this is moving like this okay now if we see between this to this we can do sometimes we do experience a kind of small small serration in the graph and those serration actually nothing but metastable pits so these are metastable pit so this metastable pits may not grow completely till it reaches ep or pit potential and once it reaches this pit potential the existing pits they will start growing at a very very high rate so then we cannot have any protection but till metastable phase pit forms it's okay but they are not growing rapidly now the best possible way to have a protection is operate operation of that particular metal below this potential below this potential this particular below this potential we say complete protection against pitting so this is interesting so this potential needs to be sometimes we need to find out by doing a cyclic polarization this is called cyclic polarization so now uh, let us not extend our discussion on pitting because uh, uh, if we want that we can have a uh, complete lecture session on uh, pitting corrosion so let us get into the some of the protection what we can have from the pitting part okay so now if we talk about protection uh, from pitting so that protection of pitting in order to have it uh, we we can follow uh, uh, different practices and most of the practices would follow uh, just to uh, avoid the conditions which are which are suitable for pitting okay so uh, mostly those are the protections apart from that there are other protections so let us understand those protection part so the protection from pitting so now first foremost is avoid conditions which initiate which favor pitting what are those one is stagnant condition so better to have a flow in the system 
And remember when we have a flow in the system that flow should be at a, uh, at a not very high flow, flow rate because high flow rate would also create problem that has a problem associated problem with the high flow because that would lead to erosion corrosion. So, so the flow should be such that it does not allow the stagnant condition to maintain. So, this is one. So, then one can have a absence of A phi plus 3 or copper plus plus. So, these are the ions which are oxidizers they can also lead to peating. So, if we do not have them peating can be avoided and that can happen that can come within the system within this particular container of metal uh, through the inlet flow. Okay. So, for example, copper ion can come into the iron pi, iron tank if we have that inlet pipe if we make off make out of uh, copper or brass pipe. So, then copper ion can get in. So, that can lead to a deposition of copper due to cathodic reaction and then copper deposit would act as a cathode and there peating can start. So, that if we can avoid that then definitely peating can be avoided. Then uh, removal of dirt dust particle small particle uh, those are the regions where it can form a small crevice kind of uh, appearance and then and that can initiate pit. For example, if it is a small dust, so this actually crevice, so there pitting can start. So, now when we come to this crevice, the crevice is <coughs> initiation of pitting sometimes. <coughs> so, this crevice removal of or avoidance of crevice, avoidance of crevice, how can we do it by doing this one that removal of dirt dust particle, the regular cleaning. And in fact, if we have a flow in the system in that can actually clean off dirt and dust. So, that can lead to bit of uh, erosion corrosion, but since the dirt is actually continuously uh, uh, moving through the stagnant situation would not arrive and that would avoid pitting related pitting related problem uh, which initiate which is initiated due to formation of crevice. So, the avoidance of crevice crevice that means avoid sharp corner sharp corner. So, because for example, if we have this kind of uh, appearance of a particular metal surface the pit can start here. Okay. So, for example, a metal surface if it is uneven, uneven. So, these are the points where pit can initiate. Okay. So, that is what uh, the sharp corners or uh, uh, groove better word is groove. So, those grooves are to be avoided. So, these are and then of course, if we can somehow maintain uniform chloride and concentration. If it is a flat surface and at locally chloride and concentration if it goes up that actually uh, disturbs the passivity and that disturbance can lead to a small appearance of pitting. For example, if this is a uh, let us say the passive layer, this is the metal, this is the passive layer and if the chloride and concentration momentarily increases here. So, the pit starts forming here because that at that location uh, pit uh, will uh, grow aggressively because the rest of the part will be protected due to the anodic sacrificial effect of that pit okay. and that actually initiates due to increase in chloride and concentration. So, uniform chloride and concentration that can only be maintained by a flow. So, if there is a flow within the system definitely that would maintain a more or less homogeneous chloride and concentration. Okay. Now, uh, these are the kind of conditions for example, other conditions are uh, as we have said that uh, smooth surface, rough surface has a higher tendency to form pit. 
if we can maintain smooth surface it is absolutely fine smooth and shiny surface. So, that would not create pit. Now, uh, a microstructure because if you if we recall we talked about macrostructure and microstructure this comes in macrostructure mode and this is microstructures more or less if we can maintain homogeneous microstructure homogeneous that would help avoiding pitting. For example, the best example is stainless steel 304 stainless steel. So, that 304 stainless steel if we avoid sensitization avoid sensitization of course, you can avoid pitting. Okay. So, that means, if it is avoidance of sensitization means chromium content becomes homogeneous fine. So, that that avoid uh, that actually would lead to uh, avoidance of pitting. So, these are the some of the conditions. Now, uh, second part is of course, uh, use of inhibitors which can avoid pitting. Okay. Now, uh, sometimes we do people do use OH minus or nitrate in chloride containing solution or electrolyte and that avoid pitting. Fine. Now, some people can use uh, one can use uh, cathodic protection fourth one can use better alloy for example 316 which contain around 2 to 3 percent molybdenum is having better protection better pitting resistance than 304. Okay. So, these are the uh, usual routes one can follow to avoid pitting. Okay. So, uh, let me stop here, we will continue our discussion on other form of corrosion. So, the form what we will start in our next lecture is uh, erosion corrosion. So, till then thank you.